Hello everyone, now I will show you how to set up your Netgear router, RAX36S. And before I start, I want to remind you, that if my video will help you, you can buy me a coffee. I donate 50% of all coffee's purchases to animal shelters. Details can be found in the description below. So, first thing you need to do, is turn on the router. Take the power adapter. Plug one end into an outlet. and the other into the router. When the router is powered on, the light will turn on. It may take a few minutes for it to completely turn on. Next, connect the cable from your broadband provider or from your modem to a special internet port. This port usually has a different color. Each cable should be inserted until it clicks. Now, you need to reset the router to the factory settings. Press and hold the reset button on the router for 10 seconds until the indicator lights on the router begin to flash. Sometimes, the button is located inside the router casing to avoid accidental pressing. In this case, use a thin object to press on it. The router will reboot, and the settings will return to the factory defaults. Insert one end of the Ethernet cable that comes with the router into one of the LAN port. ND the other into your computer's Ethernet port. Please, wait a few minutes for connection. The router is now connected to your computer. Now, you need to set it up. But first, I will show you another method for connecting the router if you do not have an Ethernet cable or your computer does not have an Ethernet port. Connect the router to the power adapter and your internet provider's cable. This will enable Wi-Fi. If the router is new and has never been configured, the Wi-Fi network will have the name of your router. Your router has its own Wi-Fi network name and password printed on a sticker. Connect to it. Great, you've connected to the router. Now let's start setting it up. First, open your web browser and visit the URL you see on the screen. Use the URL bar instead of the search bar. At the beginning, click here. Then read Netgear Terms and Conditions and click I Agree button. And click Next. Click Next again. If the settings on your router don't look like mine, then your router has a different firmware. I made a video for each kind of firmware. You can find all the links to them in the description down below. The first thing you need to do is set up a new password. The password for the admin is used to log into the web interface of your router. Pay attention to the password requirements. Write your new password in the first field and duplicate it in the second field. The next step is to select two security questions and write answers to them. You will need them, in case you need to reset the admin password in the future. On this page, you can customize your network name and password. Click Next. If your browser does not redirect after two minutes, reload the page. On the next page, you will find the information you need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. If you are connected using the preset Wi-Fi credentials, it's time to connect using the new Wi-Fi credential. If you want, you can print them out. Click Next. If the router has not been updated in a while, the following page may initiate the firmware update process automatically. If the new firmware is not available, click Next. 
After updating the firmware, you may be redirected to the Netgear website, where you can register your router. If you want to, you can do it. I'm just going to close this window, because I'm not going to do that. Log into the router's web interface again, if you are logged out of it. Enter the standard username admin and password that you created a few minutes ago. Press sign in button. Close this window. In the top right corner, you can change the language of the router's website interface. To get the internet, go to Advanced. Setup Wizard. Press No. I want to configure the router myself. Then press Next button. On the following page, select Internet Settings. In most cases, there are two options, connection with and without a login. Almost always, your internet connection will not require a login. You can find all of this information in the contract you have with your internet service provider. If your internet connection does not require you to log in, or if you do not know whether logging in is required or not, select No. Leave account name and domain name unchanged. Then in Internet IP Address section, choose Get Dynamically from ISP. In the DNS section, select Get Automatically from ISP as well. You will need to clone the MAC address of the primary computer if your ISP only allows Internet access to a specific MAC address. Select Use Default MAC Address if you are not sure about these settings. Check again that your settings are the same as mine. And click Apply. In most cases, it is not necessary to clone the MAC address. But if you can't get the internet connection after quick setup, later, in the video, I will show you how to clone MAC address. Now you need to reboot the router. To do this, go to the router's web interface if you are logged out of it. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button. And click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. If it doesn't work, check all the cables. They must be connected properly. Then log into the Router Control Panel again. Go to Advanced. Setup. Internet Setup. And choose Use Computer MAC Address. Click Apply button. And then, Reboot Router again. Go to Advanced. Advanced Home. Click on the Reboot button and click Yes. After restarting, wait a few minutes and try Googling something. That's all. If my video was useful, please support my work. You can buy me a coffee. Half of all coffees I send to animal shelters. All details are in the description down below.